Well, he was born in Hollywood and certainly brought a little bit of that swagger to IndyCar back in 2002, driving for 310 Racing, became the second African-American to compete in the Indianapolis 500, part of a full schedule that season. These days, owns a couple of businesses, including an auto repair shop in Long Beach, California, of all places. We'll talk about Long Beach uh, just minutes from the, the famed street course in Southern California. And George Mack joins us from SoCal. Great to see you. The sunglasses, it looks, it looks sunny. Man, you're living the dream in L.A. <laughs> Just outside of L.A., but, yeah, I go down to Long Beach to the shop all the time. I get the opportunity to actually drive on the racetrack uh, in a regular passenger car, going running errands and that kind of thing. But um, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, I, I remember... Uh, 2002, you guys, I know there were a lot of storylines for you, but you guys seem to have a blast that year. Yeah, lesser equipment, you guys got the most out of it, but you guys always seem to have a, a lot of fun. We had a great time, lots of laughs, lots of celebrities come to, to, to hang out, and I got to meet and hang out with tons of people, especially a lot of uh, ball players, mm. um, because 310 was... You know, they customize all the cars for all these guys. And so they all wanted to come see what 310 was involved in. Yeah. And so I got to hang out with them. I got some sponsorship out of a few. Um, and even the company now, Zions, that was hooked up with uh, the UFC uh, for quite a while. Got hooked up with those guys also and just had, just had a great time, man. I got yeah. to go to some parties and meet some meet some famous people and have lots of laughs. Yeah. Are you driving and talking to us? No, actually my wife is driving. That's right. I just want and to make sure and clear that up. You know, you're no. not driving and doing this. So no, no, my wife is driving. I'm sitting in the back of her minivan. <laughs> there you go. This is what happens. You get married, you have kids, you got a minivan, you traded in that race car a long time ago, uh, 2002 Indy 500. Started 32nd. You got in the show, which was great. You finished 17th. Right. What do you what do you remember from that race, George? Oh, everything, just like it was yesterday, my friend. Really? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of nerves, um, uh, adrenaline questions, you name it. Um, everything involved all at once. You get kind of steamrolled, actually. Especially when you know you don't have top equipment. Uh mid pack, maybe, but only on the smaller tracks where it didn't involve as much horsepower. Now, right. at that time in 02, they had just introduced the uh, Infinity. And the Infinity, I mean, you couldn't even draft those stupid things on the straightaway. I get behind Sarah Fisher, you could not even, mm -hmm. I couldn't, it would break the drive. I couldn't even stand the drive. I'm, I'm on the radio, like, man, can it was, what can I do? Can I get out and push? What am I doing? You know, what can I do? <laughs> but, um, it was still a great time. I, I met a lot of cool people there at the track. A lot of people were helpful. Yeah. Some not so much, but a lot of people were helpful. Hey, I heard about you from uh, the Shifter Christ stuff. And over in Europe, I heard about you. And so a lot of people were like, hey, what is that kind of stuff like? And I'm like, man, I'm trying to find out more about what you guys are doing. I mean, you were part of a pretty good rookie class that year. Uh, Dario yeah. Franchitti, Tony right. Khan, Max yes. Pappas. How intimidating... Yes was that you know uh very yeah. uh dario franchiti turned out to be a very cool guy at that time he was still married to ashley judd yeah she came to some of the races levi's t-shirt tennis shoes <laughs> kind of gal <laughs> hey george hey how you doing you know yeah um you know, although I was a rookie, I, the, the learning curve was so steep and I was learning so much at the time that it did help when I did have some of the cool people that were around that gave me some good information, good pointers. Um, some people made it a little bit rougher for me, but that's probably par for the course with anything that you're doing when you're a rookie. Your dad was integral, uh, to say the least, and, and obviously you're growing up and racing. He raced himself, raced at Ascot, legendary track in California. Mm. Uh, an engineer, helped in your karting, yep. certainly. It, it wasn't cheap, 
but you were winning. Uh, and your dad's a smart dude. I mean, he, he meant everything to you growing up, certainly when it came to racing. Yeah. My dad spent 100, 150 grand a year on me racing go karts. Wow. And I got to travel. I always had new stuff. We had new chassis stacked up, five grand a piece just for the bare chassis. By the time you put them together, you know, 10, 15 grand a piece. On the shifter car stuff, we had them brand new and stacked up. And he would say to me, he says, nobody's going to outspend me. <laughs> and That's commitment. he stayed up late, read the rule books and all that stuff. And, you know, being an engineer, it was just a smaller motor is all. He just had to figure some stuff out, and he did it. I know 2020, uh, it's been a struggle for all of us. Uh, you and I talked uh, last week before we were doing this. Yeah. Uh, I know it hasn't been kind to you. You've lost friends, uh, lost your grandmother, mm -hmm. your son Miles, to yes. a motorcycle accident. I mean, any of these yeah. things would be enough for anyone. How has your life experiences, maybe your father, how has all of that helped you through these last 12 months or so? I don't think it has. Um, really sucks to lose a child. It's no parent worst. server outlived their right. child. It's the worst. I wouldn't wish that on uh, my worst enemy. Uh, but uh, I don't know. The universe kind of has a way, I guess. I wanted to give up. I thought about many ways at mm. the time. I was struggling with it. And um, I was actually, uh, my mom found me. Uh, I guess I was just kind of wandering around in the streets in the middle of the night. And uh, her and my mom, her and my sister came looking for me because I was at the hospital where I got the, where I got the news, you know, and I don't remember, you know, so they say sometimes when you're in, you know, serious shock that way, your memory, you know, your mind, your, your body kind of blocks it out, your mind yeah. blocks it out to protect you. Yeah. And I don't remember any of it, but my mom said, I was just kind of wandering around. She thought I was a homeless guy. And I was just in such shock. It's crazy. But still processing that. But how do you do it? Just take one day at a time. But, you know, I got, I got a wife and I have, uh, you know, a young daughter. And even though I wanted to give up, I couldn't. I just yeah. say to myself to um, hmm. I just I try to remain positive. But sometimes it beats me up. Is that your daughter we heard earlier? Yes. She's sitting right next to me. Like I said, I thought I was going to be able to be home. I could close myself up in the room, but <laughs> we're stuck in the car. And, you know, I, you know, we already made the commitment. And so, you know, when I make a commitment with another person, I know you have your time set aside. I wanted to make sure I still did it. Oh, Sounds good. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back to racing. Uh, you have a story involving Tony George. Uh, he helped you and the team back in, in 2002 and still means something to you to this day. You, you care to get into that? You care to talk about that? Well, we went to obviously, you know, the, the first few races of the season, of that season. I crashed. I was taken out, actually. I was hit from the back in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And the next race or two races after Phoenix was the 500. And I always wanted to run the 500. I was a kid, you know, I was in go-karts at the Indy 500, where you want to go. And so uh, the team was, you know, the, the team owners, they had their head in the right place and their heart in the right place. Their checkbook wasn't quite there and we were not prepared initially for, you know, tearing that car up just before the 500. We didn't have a lot of, you know, uh, additional equipment, you know. So I was at, uh, it was after Phoenix because it was after that. It was after we crashed in Phoenix. And Tony George must have been, I don't, I know he's not psychic, but he called me. Mm -hmm. He goes, Hey kid, 
are you in the pits? I says, yeah, yeah. So he finds me, comes down to the pits, pulls me aside, and he says, hey, you know, uh, word on the street is uh, we're a little, we're a little tight. He goes, obviously we know, this, you know, this stuff is, it's, it's pricey. Yeah. And the fact that you put this thing together, I, you know, hey, he's like, you're my hero, and he goes, and it would look bad for you and minorities as well as well as look bad for the indie racing league if you were somehow unable to complete what you set out to accomplish so um i got this thing kind of figured out on what you'd probably need and uh here you go wow and i looked down open this up and i look at him I said, get out of here, man. Are you really kidding me right now? I don't joke about money, kid. He said, finish strong. Do what you got to do. This should get you over the hump. Uh, the second African-American to qualify for the Indy 500. You're also the last. Here we are in 2021. Before yeah. we started, you and I talked about Pinsky Entertainment, Race for Equality and Change, the initiative launched last July. Rod Reed is starting uh, an African-American-led uh, USF 2000 team, the Road to Indy. Yes. Your, your opinion, how can initiatives like that help change uh, the landscape in open wheel racing? What I learned along the way was um, a lot of people don't want, they don't want to be involved in something where they don't see it more people that look like them. They feel out of place. I've heard this multiple occasions from different people. For me and my dad, that, that, why, we didn't care about that. This right. is what I love. This is my dream. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. So I just think that if, if somehow we could reach, you know, more of a diverse audience some kind of way, uh, maybe that might incite a little, little bit of change as far as, you know, more minorities being interested in, yeah. Automobile racing of some sort, you know? Yeah. That's what it's all about, I, I think. That's a start, anyway, for sure. That's a start. That's a start, yeah. None of us have the answers. We're, we're learning as we go. We're all human beings. We're all here trying to do the same thing. You know, we, we, we want a great family. We want to make money, live nice, you know, have good people in our life. We all want the same thing. Yeah. Last thing, uh, yeah. as mentioned, you have an auto repair shop in Long Beach. You had a chance to meet Alexander Rossi, when the series was there a couple of years ago, it was completely by accident. How, how did that go down exactly? You know, they, I, I have my auto shop, right? And uh, I, my dad also always told me, get your wagon to a brighter star. Mm. So I set out to partner with uh, Napa mm -hmm. Auto Parts, which is nationwide, on and on and on. I said, well, look, we're, you know, we're sponsoring a car and we're going to be at the Grand Prix. Why don't you, and your shop is not very far. We drove right past it. Why don't you come meet us over here in downtown Long Beach? I go into the back. Two of the girls that were there, hey, George. I mean, just like right away, like I had just seen them. I can't remember the one girl's name, but worked for for, for Rossi. That's what we did. People raised their hands, threw questions out. Alex would say, hey, gee, you want to answer this? And I'd say, hey, Alex, answer this. Or, or he would answer it, and I'd be shaking my head and add a little bit to it, and we'd all get a good laugh out of That's it while great. we're eating, and some people are having some wine and things, and then sometimes I would answer it, and he would go, oh, man, that's what the cars would do before. Oh, well, we, well, we, well. You know, <laughs> and so we kind of put the whole thing together just spur of the moment, and it was a great time. Hey, you left an impression, uh, and it was a good one. I appreciate it might, that. Thing. It might have been one Indy 500, uh, but trust me, a lot, a lot of people remember the name George Mack. Eh, that's very nice to hear. Thanks, G. Don't be a stranger, okay? I won't, please. You don't either. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome every time. Great to catch up. Thank you. Thank you, boss. Have a good one.